John McNeil is described as a focused businessman, a family man, a guy that just did things right. He's a college grad, had no criminal record, and volunteered in his community. It's no surprise that John McNeil would do whatever it took to protect his family, and he did. But no one expected that his fatherly instincts would turn into a national debate. He said somebody's trespassing on the property. They pulled a knife on my son. December 2005, and the 911 call that started it all. Minutes later, John McNeil would pull a gun, shoot and kill Brian Epp, a contractor who'd been working on the family's home. McNeil's son claimed Epp had threatened him with a knife, so he called his dad. McNeil raced home and confronted the contractor. As Epp moved towards him, McNeil fired a warning shot into the ground, then shot him in the head. McNeil claimed self-defense. Is the world to believe that you cannot protect your children and your property if you are a black man in Georgia? The case became a rallying cry for civil rights leaders who questioned self-defense laws and if they're inherently biased. Free John McNeil! Free John McNeil! They insisted McNeil should have been protected by the Castle Doctrine, legal protection for people who use deadly force on their own property if threatened with deadly force. Whether it be Trayvon Martin in Florida or whether it be John McNeil here in Georgia, we are victims on both ends of the That's gun. Right. Prosecutor Pat Head said Ray's had nothing to do with his decision to try McNeil for murder. So this isn't a stand your ground case. This is a case where McNeil said he was going there to whip his and so got a gun out and then shot him. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He killed him. However, last fall, an appeals judge ruled in favor of releasing McNeil, citing multiple errors at trial, including improper instruction to the jury about the Castle Doctrine. Jurors were also not informed about Epps criminal record. The attorney general pushed back, but the state ultimately agreed to a plea bargain with McNeil. He pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter, a 20-year sentence, but was released on time served, seven years plus 13 years probation. What's the first thing you want to do now? Breathe. John McNeil now joins me for his exclusive interview. John, you did. You took that breath. And then what was the next thing you did once you were released from those prison doors? Well, I went back to my hometown to um, lay my wife, my late wife, to rest. Um, it was hard. It was hard because that was one of the smiley faces that I wanted to see when I walked out of prison because she did so much and worked so hard, even though she was going through her sickness and, and fighting that nasty disease called cancer. Um, it killed me. It, I mean, I was standing up, but literally it killed my spirit just to know that someone fought so hard for something that they couldn't at least get the opportunity to see me walk out. And I also think that it hurt me also when I lost my mom on July, six months prior to my wife there. She too was, was praying and doing everything she could, and her only hope was to see me walk out of the prison doors along with the host of close friends and family. So, I mean, even though I'm out, my heart is still hard, still heavy for us losing my wife and my mom and, and basically everything that I ever worked hard, that the American dream, I lost it all, went down the drain. John, I, I don't know how you hold it all together, losing your, your mom and your wife, and you're in prison for seven years. And then I had a chance to talk to your son, Laron, um, your son that you say you were defending uh, when uh, Brian Epps uh, threatened you and him, allegedly with a knife. Laron says he carries a lot of guilt, um, and he carries it for you. This is what he told me earlier today. Part of me at the time felt like if I would have never called my father, he wouldn't have got incarcerated. So for a long time, I took the role as it was my fault. I was to blame. Brian, side by side with his, or Laron, rather, side by side with his brother. What do you say to Laron when you hear that he carries so much uh, on his shoulders? First of all, I'm sorry that my younger son would um, feel that way 
and that he was responsible, somehow responsible for me going to prison. Um, he did the right thing. I thought I did the right thing, at least as, as what the law said that I should have did. And I want to say something because it's, it's been, I've been hearing it, but I want, I, want to, I want to clarify something. Go ahead. I never, appro I never approached anyone. I went home to my house, and I pulled in my driveway closest to my garage. I was trying to get in the house when Brian Epp approaches, approached me. I never approached anyone. So let me ask you, John, you know, the DA said, look, uh, you could have stayed in your car. You had called police. Police was, the police were on their way. Your son was inside. The doors were locked. Why didn't you just stay in that car? Well, first of all, that was just an opinion that I could have stayed in the car. Um, I never knew at that particular point, my son could have been out in the backyard with his throat slashed, bleeding to death. My thing was, I was trying to get in the house, and then from getting in the house, I was going to go out back if I didn't see my boy in the house and see where he was at. Um, staying in the car at my house, I didn't think about that because I'm at home. If a man can't get out at his house or his home, where can you get out at? John, we did reach out to Brian Epps' family. His widow, Carrie, uh, did not want to come on camera, but she did give us uh, this statement. She said, I can't do anything about it. He murdered my husband. He got out of prison because the NAACP got involved and the DA caved. I want to get right back to John McNeil. You heard the statement from Brian Epps' widow. What would you like to say to Carrie Epp, John? First of all, I want to say to the Epps family is that I'm sorry that this incident ever took place. Um, no one or happy or be joyful when someone loses a life. Unfortunately, our life was lost, and that I'm sorry, truly sorry, to the family um, for that loss. Um, Hold that. I don't, Go I ahead, don't, John. I don't want. I don't want to stoop to any level of negativity because, you know, negativity is all the way around mm. this whole case, and I and I look at it from a positive perspective, even though injustice have been rendered in this case. I refuse to let negativity come into my spirit or come into my thought pattern and that to latch out and say something negative about somebody or something. So even though people may say negative things, I'm going to stay positive. Amen, John. Ryan, I'm going to get to you then. If this, if we were talking about a white man here shooting a black man, would it have been a different outcome? I think it would be looked at differently. I mean, just by us sitting here on this panel right now, if we both leave HLN right now and both get pulled over by the cops, it's going to be a totally different outcome based on, even though we both have on suits, the, guy, the way the guy's going to approach the car is going to be totally different than he approaches him. I mean, it, it's just the way it is in America these days. And I think that, you know, John is, is trying to take the high road. But, you know, two lives were changed forever in this. I mean, he went to prison and the other person lost their life, and there's no happy outcome for this for anybody. Have we lost sight of the Castle Doctrine, Vinny? I think we have. The reason we have it is we, we don't want to put any burden on the victim, right? Someone's coming onto your property, right? Someone's coming to you. Back in the old days, self-defense, you had a duty to retreat. Before you could defend yourself, you had to run away. And then the lawmakers are saying, wait a minute, why should you have to run away? You should be able to stand your ground, protect your home, it's your castle. I mean, that's the whole point of these laws. And if someone's coming onto your property with a weapon, that's that. I mean, that was the reason we have these. So we don't put any extra burden on the victims. John McNeil, would you do anything differently now? Your message to parents who'll do anything to protect their kids. Well, being a parent, um, I don't think that there's anything that I could have did differently. I called 911. I rushed home to my to my son's rescue. As I got there. The attacker that wasn't on my property, but on a Justin property, came over, rushing, rushing me quickly. Um, I don't know if I could have did anything different.